السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to a new episode of Life from Karbala with me your host Ahmed Ali Tonight inshallah we are going to commemorate the third day after the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam Today we witness the largest mawkib, the largest procession Mawkib Aza Bani Asad One of the most significant mawakib that comes through Karbala on the third day after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein along with his family members, his companions. We discussed in the previous episode the role of Bani Asad and how they buried the bodies of Imam Al Hussein along with his family and his companions. I mean, we, we saw the how they weren't able to aid Imam Al Hussein in his battle against uh, falsehood, but they came after the martyrdom after three days that's where they met Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam who came from Kufa by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to uh, came to Karbala buried the body of his father Imam al Hussein with no head along with his brothers Ali al-Akbar Ali al-Saghir six month old baby I mean brutally shot with a uh, three-headed arrow and beheaded after that what cruelty do we see from the army of shaitan but before uh, we go into ex uh, explaining the mawkib of Aza bani asad let's welcome my dear brother sheikh muntadar al karbala islam alaikum sheikhana how are you i mean it was amazing what we saw subhanallah thousands if not millions of people from bani asad from various tribes in Iraq came to commemorate. We saw some with shovels, various activities going on to represent and show and illustrate yeah. how the tribe of Bani Asad 1400 years ago came on the third day to bury the bodies of the Ahlul Bayt, the bodies of the sons of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What significance holds behind the action of the tribe of Bani Asad? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم القول مني في جميع الأشياء قول علي محمد عليهم السلام فيما أسر وما أعلن وفيما بلغني عنهم وما لم يبلغني May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad and his holy progeny yeah. and may Allah's eternal damnation and curses be upon their enemies Amin Rabb Al-Alamin Until the day of judgment Ya Allah And we witnessed and it's my first time as well I've never been on in Karbala, like we said before, it's for 10 days of Muharram and now the 13th of Muharram. I've only witnessed Karbala during the days after the Tishad of Imam Zayn al Abidin and Sayyid Sajidin alayhi salam. I've never seen uh, about this, this Aza of Bani Asad. Um, and when you see it, and this also falls under the category, like we said. Of Hayu Amrana, Rahmallah, Man Hayu Amrana, and it also falls under the category of the Tashbihat that the Mu'minin do. I mean, if you look at Banu Asad, and we mentioned the story of Banu Asad and mm -hmm. how the women of Banu Asad played a very important role yeah. in in getting their men to rise from their locations to go and aid Ibn Ibn Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in order to bury these these bodies that mm -hmm. have been changed by the sons SubhanAllah. and like you said as well and inshallah the viewers when they when they look at the videos and let them do more research to look at this beautiful image that Banu Asad brings towards Karbala I mean like you said they come with shovels they come with caskets they come with al-kafur uh, wal as if they're going to bury a fresh body today and of course this falls on the Sha'ar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean when the believer when the western individual looks at these images what are they going to see who are they burying why are tens of thousands and millions of people gathered in a geographically small location in terms of geography are they burying somebody did this person just die yesterday no this person yeah. died 1400 years ago yet his message still lives on today fresh and that's why Rasulullah says, and we repeat it again and again, Haratan fi qulub al la tatfa' abada, that there is an, a, a burning flame in the hearts of the believers. And this is the flame. 
this flame that left the believer and you saw how the temperature was there was it was for the Iraqi population it was cold because it was raining yeah. and it was muddy and as the poet says when he talks about Ziyat al-Ru'in yeah. al-Muqaddas he says no matter if it's cold nor if it's hot we will come to you Abu Abdullah and we will crawl if they cut off our legs if they cut off our hands we'll continue coming to you yeah. as long as you reach Hussein alayhi salam because we want to reach Hussein alayhi salam and honestly that image that I saw children old men and the most important thing about Aza Banu Asad is you see the women come in first in yeah. the haram yeah. in the millions. I can say millions with, with, yeah, with no huge. question about that. They're huge. And statistically speaking, I, was, I did some quick research about the, the Aza after the Sukkot of Saddam al Lain in 2003. No. Um, I noticed that uh, subhanAllah, just as this Lain left, even though Iraq and those who have been here in 2003, they could see Iraq was not in a very good situation in terms of safety for the Zawar. No. It was still a, f- a war zone, it was still a place of, of, of slaughter and of killing, fighter jets, everything. I remember I was here in 2003. Even though the statistics record that the tribe of Banu Asad by themselves were 10,000 during that time. That's just Banu Asad. And of course, this became a sunnah. A sunnah hasana that the believers kept on doing over and over again. And you see that with Banu Asad, you have so many <coughs> other tribes that come from the outskirts of Karbala, from inside Karbala, wanting to participate with Banu Asad. Yeah. So when I say 10,000 people, I'm talking about the tribe of Banu Asad it's by just themselves. The tribe. And then I found another statistic, statistics that said in the year 2010, there was approximately 50,000 people from Banu Asad. I mean, imagine, like the Banu Asad, they're a big tribe, first of all. Huge. A lot of them might have might have b- deported from Iraq a long time ago, in the reign of Saddam in 35 years. A lot of them might have came back, especially those whom, whom have in their lineage, they go back to Banu Asad. Yeah. And they're like, look, my grandfathers, from the time, from the year 61 after Hijrah till now, they have been doing this ritual. I'm going to follow my grandfather's footsteps, my ancestors, so I'm going to come. And that is why it increases and increases. So in 2010, there was approximately 50,000, also not including any other tribes. If you want to count other tribes, say each other tribe, another 50 or 40 tribes that came. Let's say, just for argument's sake, that each tribe is only 10,000. That's still a lot of people just from the tribes. And that's 2010. And then if you look at 2015, I have I'm not sh- I have not received any any numbers, but if you are to look at Yatar Arba'in, for example, since 2003 till now, you'll find this very beautiful exponential increase in Zawar. That's not yeah, I mean, Subhanallah. I mean, the, what these believers carry in their hearts for Abi Abdullah alayhi salam, that they're able to come in this weather, when it's raining, when it's cold, and in harsh conditions. All they're doing is following the hadith of Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam when he says al-muwasat afdal al-amal when you condole and you console your believing brother imagine the imam says ahsan al-ahsan muwasat al-akhwan that's your believing brother that the best of deeds the best of actions that a believer can do is to condole his brother console him make him feel make him feel good now imagine if that person is your imam that's just your brother yeah if the afdal al-a'mal can be considered your brother so if i come to you and you're in a bad situation and i console you i tell you ahmed patience and now imagine when you do this to somebody who was the daughter who was the son of the daughter of ahsan al-khalq rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and my dear brothers and sisters and i ask the entire world to come and look at this aza Look at Aza Atwarij. These are two commemorative gatherings that I've never seen until this year. And by Allah, Allah. they are they're something divine. Alhamdulillah. They are Allah. something that is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely. And they are something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I can feel the atmosphere change. You can Definitely. feel the angels around you. Definitely. When Muhammad Sadaq alayhi salam Arba'at Alfu Malakan in the Qabr al Hussein, Shu'ath Ghubbar, that there are 4,000 angels by the grave of Abdullah covered in dust, in grievance, in sorrow. 
you feel that especially when you feel when you're walking in the in the Rakhat Tawarij yeah. you feel the dust all around you yeah. and as the Sha'ar says that النار لا تمس جسما عليه غبار تراب الحسين that إذا شئت النجاة فزر حسين فغدا تلقى الإله قر عيني فإن النار لا تمس جسما عليه غبار تراب الحسين روح إلى الفداء he says if you want to seek salvation then visit أبي عبد الله سيد الشهداء روح إلى الفداء for the fires of hell do not touch the skins that carry the dust that falls from the feet of the zawar of Abi Abdullah Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah I mean if you, you just mentioned you said why and what is the reason behind uh, so many millions coming I mean you mentioned there's a flame burning in the hearts so of the that's believers that's the best explanation that's the best explanation but when you look at it this year in Raghda Tawarij the Aza of Tawarij six million people came <coughs> as statistics say six million no they could be wrong even more because no how matter what it's, still, it's, it's, still, it's grand still huge and, graphically su- and subhanallah when you look at it nothing happened no catastrophes sense, nothing sense, happened no. subhanallah if you look at it if you want to compare to what happened in hajj oh, hajj what two two three million Beautiful. that's that's its capacity yeah, exactly the maximum capacity of hajj three million no. and we had thousands of people die suffocate trampled over and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen coming running from tuarij which is approximately 22 kilometers from karbala from no. the holy shrine of Imam hussein they run and what caught my eye in this year is the christians yes. that ran yes. along with the muslims yes. with the shia to the holy shrine carrying crosses on their back and on the front and running with the believers all the way from tuarij 22 kilometers I mean, when you look at that, you see that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam did not only have an influence on his, his followers, his lovers. I mean, you see Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, many, many intellects, many people in leadership positions were influenced by Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Why? I mean, we read from scholars, we read from historians that the message of Imam al Hussein was not only for the Muslims. I mean, the Muslims were the ones that betrayed him. If you want to take it in, in that perspective, he stood, he took the ultimate stand for humanity. The message of Prophet Muhammad did not come for Muslims. Islam was established from the time of Adam, before Adam. Every p- person that o- obeys the command of Allah knows Ahl al Bayt and knows how to curse their enemies is a Muslim. Everyone that hates falsehood walks in the path of righteousness. As a follower of Ahlul Bayt, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will reward him. But going to our discussion for tonight, Aza bani Asad, we saw that even in the traditions in the Iraqi traditions in Iraq, we see the leaders of the tribes mm. do not go out unless necessary circumstances. Like th- 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 there has to be something uh, uh, so hardship. Someone got killed. La Allah may God forbid, an accident happened. That's when they leave. But we see every leader of every tribe that came out walking in the front of his tribe. I mean, that's amazing. It's a beautiful point. And right. they, they come, they're, I don't know how to say it, the agal, the, the ritual here they have, the culture here. Yes. Some don't even have it on because they know. And to, that them, for to them, that's sacred as well. That's sacred. To, to leave the house without it. Definitely. But they know that 1400 years ago, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, that tribe had the chance to aid Imam al Hussein, but they were sh- their, their spirituality was shaking, it wasn't, wasn't straight. Their inner will, their inner strength kept them away from aiding the Imam. So they know that they're sorry. They feel sorry for what their ancestors did. Yet their ancestors went out on the third day picked up the sand, put it on their head, mourned over Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and it was known for the first tribe that mourned over Imam Hussain and his holy family. So if we wanted to conclude the short night, what can we say about the rituals? I mean, this is a very significant ritual because they're commemorating 
and they're upholding the rituals of Allah by upholding the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We heard when they walked, they were chanting poems. They were chanting uh, stuff that really made me tear up. That's why the, the viewer has to come to Karbala, inshallah. Definitely. I mean, if you want to respect the viewers, if you, you know, looking over TV might not be enough. You have to come here in Karbala and experience. witness the actual miracle. Experience what goes on in Bain al-Haramain, what goes on in Shara al-Qabla of al Hussein of al Hussein al-Abbas, and you actually get to know what happened. You feel like Ashura, the day of Ashura is coming into, in, in, in reacting when you see the Mukhayyam on the day of Ashura. The Mukhayyam, they put up the tents similar to the tents of al Hussein alayhi salam. Horses run through the tents, children try to dodge the horses. And everybody is scared. As you mentioned a couple of nights ago, a brother narrated a story, a story to you that when Shimr was about to hit the daughter of Abu Hussein alayhi salam, an old lady picked up a block and threw it at him. No. Subhanallah, we see, we see the flame within the believers' hearts. We see it. I mean, and you cannot, respected viewers, I emphasize on this, looking over video, over TV, is enough to get an idea mm. about it. But when you come to Karbala, you see how Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, how, he, how his sacrifice is implemented in the land of Karbala. So, respected viewers, Shaykh and I will go into a short break, inshallah, to illustrate to you and show to you the dedicated servants of Imam al Hussein, how they ran from their tribes, from the place of their homes all the way to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam chanting Ya Hussein, chanting the sorrowness and showing the grief. So respect the viewers to that break. Stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Look ya Zahra Look ya Zahra Respected viewers, as you can see right now, we have one of the largest mawakib, mawakib Aza Bani Asad. They come after the third day after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in a well-known narration by Imam al-Sajjad in the Ahl al-Bayt. Bani Asad, the women of Bani Asad on the third day saw the bodies of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein, along with his companions, his family members, and encouraged and started, uh, started talking about their men for not burying the sons of the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So as you can see behind me, the mokib is large. It entails every single race in, in the community, in the Iraqi community. Everyone gathers on the third day after the martyrdom of Imam Hussain alayhi salam to commemorate the burying of the bodies with no heads of Imam al Hussein, of his companions and his family members. <laughs> Told me of this day as well. I knew 
what was to become of me But even then I could not stand witness When I saw Shemir walking to him My mother you cannot bear to see What they did to his broken body Arrow in his heart never ripped apart So they've said do not look yonder When Fatimah came to Kabbalah So they've said do not look yonder as you can see right now, I mean, the Mawakib are starting to begin right now. And you can see the Sada, the descendants of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, from the tribe of Bani Asad. Up until today, they commemorate the third day after the martyrdom of Muhammad wasallam, through burying and through plays to Shabih to, uh, to illustrate how Bani Asad came to bury the bodies of Imam Hussain and his companions who had no heads. The heads were taken to Kufa, there where they met Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam. He came from Kufa to Karbala to help Bani Asad to bury the bodies. In a very well-known na narration by Imam al-Sajjad in the Ahl al-Bayt, we see that Imam al-Sajjad came to Karbala. The chains fell from him like they were melted metal. Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam says, when we were in Kufa, the metal fell from my niece's hand, from my nephew's hand, with, uh, it was just like metal falling, melting from his hands, came to Karbala. Bani Asad saw the Imam, started kissing his hands, kissing his forehead, saying, Ibn Rasulullah, we are sorry for not being there for your father, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So the tribe of Bani Asad in 2015, 1437 after Hijra, are still commemorating this day by walking to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam more than 1400 years ago. I mean, it's amazing to see that. Subhanallah, what dedicated servants of Allah, what dedicated servants of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, they walk every year to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein to show their loyalness to Imam al Hussein, their strength and their will that they will stay on the path of Ahlul Bayt and they will stay on the path of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam no matter what happens around the world. I mean, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the prayers of all the believers of Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi alayhim. As you can see right now, the sons of Bani Asad are beating their chest over sorrow and grief for not being there for the Imam. But alhamdulillah, 1400 years later, they are here to lament over the tragedy of Allah Hussain alayhi salam and lament over the tragedy of Karbala, of what happened in Karbala. But it was Ali, as hard she came to the one they killed in his father's arms. What was the sin of this whole child when the arrow hit he had way up he cried I'm thirsty had they no mercy so they said do not look the eyes of when father man came to Kabbalah No. 
not see His arms would show and lead them to Him Where there lay the rest of His boyars around Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you inshallah enjoyed that report. I mean, it was amazing to see how the believers and the lovers of Imam al Hussein express their grief, express their sorrow, and show to the world that the flame in their hearts is still burning until the Day of Judgment, as Imam Sadiq states. We saw in the reports how the believers of Imam al Hussein, the true followers of Ahlul Bayt, السلام, uphold the commands of Ahlul Bayt and uphold the rituals of Imam al Hussein along with the rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But back to the discussion with my dear brother Sheikh Muntadar. Welcome back, Habibi. Allah um, So we wanted to conclude the night. Inshallah. So if you have anything to say, Inshallah. Um, two things, Inshallah, I want to conclude with. No. First of them is one of the important shaa'ar of Allah, which is recitation of a ziyarah, Ziyarat Ashura al Muqaddas. No. As everybody knows, Ziyarat Ashura is one of the, the texts, the sacred texts that we have that has been narrated by our Imams and with its chain it goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Hadith Qudsi no. There's no question about the authenticity of the ziyarah and the ziyarah contains many secrets and those who have tried the ziyarah you can ask them those who have hajat, requests they've invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the ziyarah so I want to share a story, inshallah, inshallah, about an incident that happened in Samarra. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, uh, an incident that happened in Samarra, and then this 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 story is narrated by several scholars. No. And the scholar that I've been reading it from is Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Hari Al Yazdi. Mm -hmm. And it was at the time of, after the time of Sayyid Muhammad Al Shirazi Al Mujaddid Al Awwal, and the one who who was who experienced this, who he narrates from, is the Sayyid Muhammad al-Fushakari. And his son also narrates the same incident, that at the time of Samarra, during the time, sorry, in Samarra, uh, after the Sayyid, of course, built his house there in Samarra and everything, and the Sayyid was alive at the time, of course, during this incident. Um, he was busy with, with building the house of the Sayyid Muhammad Hassan al-Shirazi, and taking care of the the the, 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 the Muslim Ummah in general during mm -hmm. that time because it was something new that he came to Samarra to find this big Hawza um, and there was a very serious epidemic that happened during that time in mm -hmm. Samarra and inshallah if I do make a mistake please correct me no, I mean. a very serious epidemic hit the city of Samarra yeah. to the point where the Sayyid states Sayyid al-Fushakari and Sayyid Abdul Karim al-Yazdi and other Taqi Shirazi, Muhammad Taqi Shirazi say that people were dying day by day. Yeah. So the ulama gathered together and Shaykh al Hari Yazdi says he gathered in that majlis and he says that um, Muhammad Taqi Shirazi was there and as well as my teacher Sayyid al Fushakari. Yeah. A very, exactly. It was very, a very uh, serious. But people were basically, disease. people were dying and yeah. the ulama wanted a way to solve this disease. So he said to them while he was sitting down, Sayyid al Fushakari, he said, right now, if I give a hukum, a fatwa, a delegation right now, that this must be done, will everybody follow it? The ulama said, yes. He said, then I give a fatwa today that for the next 10 days, it's an obligatory upon every Shi'i Muslim in Samarra to recite the Ashura. Yeah. And they did, in fact, follow this, every Shi'i in Samarra, for 10 days straight. And he said the epidemic lifted from all the Shia in the neighborhood or in Samarra in general yeah. to the point where the Mukhalifin in the area were they were still struck with this epidemic. And then they asked why they told them we recited Ziyat Ashura. So they began to recite Ziyat Ashura as well. Subhanallah. Abi Abdullah alayhi salam, when you say Abi Abdullah, no matter what you are. Yesterday I noticed a video of a man in London who was Jewish who he knows about the sacrifice of Abdullah being a universal one. He bought some dates and he was giving it to the people in the streets helping the Shia in their mission. The Mukhalifin recited Ziyat Ashura as well. And 
the ulama all narrate this that even the mukhalifi at that time there was nobody again in that city that even the epidemic was gone the epidemic was gone this is from the barakat of Abdullah alayhi salam with his shahada that he gave on the day of Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram on Ashura, he was given these karamat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second thing what I want to conclude and say, and we're going to say it again and again, and you also mentioned it as well, is my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, you must come to Karbala at least one definitely, in your lifetime. Definitely. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, and we mentioned this in many of the nights, that visit Abi Abdullah al-Hussein once in your lifetime, said you won't be a stranger amongst the people of heaven now when I look at this hadith I ponder upon it I say even now in this dunya when I speak to you or speak to people that have lived Karbala it's different than when I speak to somebody else who has not lived Karbala definitely I was talking to a brother that came from London a couple of days ago and he told me he's like oh my, when, I, I've, when I was young four or five years I remember hearing the majalis we used to recite in the julus my uncles and my fathers until I was 20, 25 years old I've never seen Karbala I've heard everything Mukhayyim this, Tal this, Zainab alayhi salam Al-Radhi'a, Maqam but when it came to Karbala everything began to materialize even though there were buildings and structures around me what he told me is what I did is I closed my eyes and I imagined everything a barren wasteland and I began to draw Karbala in my head the best I can the best I can draw Karbala in my head okay that's the Mukhayyam over there okay the water the Nahar must be there the river that means the Fadl Abbas had to, he's like this made me feel something that's unexplainable yeah. so believers my brothers and sisters when you come to Karbala do the same thing remember you've lived in, in the Majalis probably for so long when you were young but when you see here, everything becomes, begins to materialize in front of you. Everything begins to manifest in front of you. Yeah. And then the tragedy of Abi Abdullah will strike you ten times more than it already does. Definitely. It will make you even stronger than you were before. So that is why, what I say. That's what I end this, this, this night with, these holy blessed days with, is that May Allah, first of all, give you the tawfiq to visit Abi Abdullah. Because it is Abi Abdullah alayhi salam is the one who invites us to come Definitely. to Karbala. And I would also like to say that we would like to thank Imam Hussein TV for giving us the opportunity to serve Abi Abdullah. And we ask Abi Abdullah alayhi salam that he can intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. Allah. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, if you want a hadith from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, Ya Allah, ten times. So right now we raise our hands together and we say Ya Allah, 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 Ya Allah. After you say the Hajjah ten times, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Ask your Hajjah. But instead of asking your Hajjah right away, we're going to say Ya Allah, Bihaqi Fatima ta wa abiha, wa ba'liha wa baniha wa sirr al mustawda'i fiha. Ya Allah, by the right of Fatima alayhi salam and Muhammad yeah. and Ali and Hassan and Hussein, peace be upon them all. And Ya Allah, I ask you by the Marid of Karbala, the one who was here in Karbala, yeah. who was sick, who could not aid his father, Abi Abd al Hussein, on the day of Ashura, by his right and by his sickness, to cure every single person, every single believer, Ya Allah. Ilahi, yeah. by the right of the stranger, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. You take every stranger right now, we have so many strangers that live in refugee camps, that live in refugee camps across the entire world. Citizens. We ask you, Ya Allah, by the right of Al Gharib, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, in these oh. nights where Sayyidah Zainab crosses alone in the deserts with no Abbas and no Hussein, by her right, Ya Aba Abdullah, there are many families that left because of this, what ha- was happening in Iraq. So bring them back to their families, Ya Allah, inshaAllah. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Ameen, Rabbi al May Allah grant, uh, may Allah grant all your hawa'ij, all the believers' hawa'ij, we request. And we ask you, O believers, O brothers and sisters, to pray for my mother and father and for my dear brother Ahmed's family, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Shaykhana. I mean, I cannot add anything upon what you said. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the will and the strength to come visit Imam Hussein alayhi salam at least once in our lifetime, if not twice, three times. 
but Sheikh Hana, thank you very much for joining us over the few nights. Thank you very much, respected viewers, for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the wishes in your life, grant you everything that you wish for. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the right of Ahlul Bayt, on the path of righteousness. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Hana. Allah alaikum, inshaAllah.